Ta-da! Hey, ta-da! Hello. Oh, Hi, worked. everyone. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. I'm Nicole Gallucci, your postdoc at CosmoQuest, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host in the office next door, Georgia Bracey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And we are uh, we are going to talk about some of our favorite apps for doing and learning astronomy. I've gotten a whole bunch of suggestions from you guys already uh, via the comments mm -hmm. in various places and Twitter and the whatnots. Um, so I'm going to tell you right off the bat now, I will not be sharing any links until the end of the show because I have about 18 tabs open right now <laughs> and you don't want to sit here and watch me typing. So I will share this entire list of all your favorites uh, after the show on, oh gosh, where are we going to do that? I guess on the event page, I can go ahead and edit the description on the event page, um, the description of the Hangout on the CosmoQuest event page. I'll add it there. Maybe I'll do a blog post too. So go to Cosmo. Yeah. Let's do a blog on the Educator Zone. We don't do that enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that would be that would be a great thing, and it yeah. would be good if you you know if you guys want to comment because you want to add some more you know tips and advice about using some of these apps and different um, sorts of environments where they can be used, different age groups, things you've done with them. I mean, all of that kind of stuff would be great to have, and would be a little more than we could just post. Yeah, on the yeah. Event. So yeah, a blog would be excellent. So I'll blog on the yeah. so if you go to cosmoquest.org. Click Educate and Educator Zone. There's a blog over there, and I will post all the links there for sure afterwards, probably tonight. Uh, I think I'm done blogging about the supernova in M82 for now. So the what? <laughs> the what? There was a supernova? The what? Yeah, if you didn't already hear, there was a supernova that went off in M82. It was, just a, it was announced early, early this morning, um, U.S. time, although it's been seen as early as several days ago in uh, many amateur astronomer images, including the virtual star party. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, good job, guys. <laughs> Seeing yeah. it on Sunday night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. So, uh, be sure to, to follow that news. That's going to be pretty exciting the coming days and weeks ahead uh, right. for your M82. And the weekly space hangout, I'm sure we'll talk about it for like half an hour. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to leave a comment on this show, there are too many places to do that, so we're going <laughs> to ask you uh, if you are watching this um, to use the Q&A app on Google+. Plus. Uh, if you're watching this somewhere, it should have uh, the little... Q and A app on the Hangout event page. We went through this last. We went through this madness last week, on the on the Space Hangout. Uh, you you use the Q and A app. Too. Yeah, we need to blog. blog. <sighs> Things. How to comment? <laughs> yeah, so use the Q and A app, or if you're on the event page on Google Plus, you can use that as well. I will watch those two sources as carefully as I can. Uh, if you tweet at me or post on YouTube, I might see it, I might not. So the best place is the Q&A app and the event page on Google+, uh, so you, we can uh, add your recommendations, mm -hmm. answer your questions as we go along. Um, I think that's it for Top Matter. Do you have, <laughs> do you have one you want to start with, or would you like me to start? Um, well... Oh, by the way, so we're talking mobile apps here, although we may talk about a few more computer apps. She has an iPhone, I have an Android. So we've got those two pretty much covered. We're going to try. Yeah, well, I would say I have an older iPhone. So okay. <laughs> I was going through things today, I noticed, oh, this one is better with the more current iPhone, which I don't have. But um, I'll start with a simple one, though, that I mm -hmm. always liked. I love the app for the astronomy picture of the day, the Ooh. APOD app, because it's... And I don't know, I mean, I can, I should try to pull it up on my phone, but maybe that won't be as helpful as it sounds. And that's pretty um, easy to find. But the app, yeah. right, I know, they're easy to find and easy, you know, Google it and you know where to download it and all that. But it's great because if you like the, the APOD, um, you know, the picture of the day that you can just see on the website, you know, it's always some gorgeous, great picture. And then there's a nice little... Um, paragraph or two written by an astronomer that tells you a little bit about it and it's always it's just interesting and it's not always what you think like for today for example um, there's a lovely snowy picture of the superstorm of 1938 something like that anyway um, so sometimes it's you know it's weather more weather related but it's earth space earth's a planet um, yeah so <laughs> it's all connected um, and then just always really interesting so the app of course will download that picture 
and then you can um, hit a little button and it'll flip over and it'll give you that information about it. Um, so that's just kind of a nice easy one you can get you know every morning see what the picture of the day is um, right on your phone. So this is kind of a cool it's kind of a cool thing. It'll archive um, a bunch of pictures so um, you can hang on to your favorites. And um, so that's just kind of a nice easy one that is fun. So a pod uh, astronomy picture of the day has been around since I want to say the mid nineties. It has. Maybe. It's really it's. It was started. Um, you know we should have them on the show. <laughs> I, I feel like we may have <laughs> not not learning space, but um, I feel like they were in another hangout at some point that I saw uh, about how they were doing astronomy picture of the day way before all this social media mm -hmm. thing and, and these mobile things. Um, so it's it's been going for many many years. Great way to get a gorgeous astronomy image every day. So it right, uh, looks right. like there's both Android and iPhone apps for that. So yeah, you can see that. of course you can share the image, all that good stuff. Get all oh. the information about it. So I like it, I like it a lot. It's awesome. fun. It's easy. I'm gonna go into my Changes science folder. Day. What's that? <laughs> He's checking every day. Changes every day. So yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna go into my science apps folder on here. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go right up front and and uh, promote our, our our new Cosmo Quest app. Android users, this is in the Play Store. iOS users, it is coming. Like as <laughs> soon as they approve it, it is coming. It's been written. Mm -hmm. uh, this app is Earth or not Earth. So but, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Earth or not Earth. Ah! So we've been talking about this for a few weeks since uh, Joseph Moore finished this up as his master's project for computer science. Um, and he just put version 2, I think, on the Android store yesterday. So if you've already downloaded it, you want to download it again. A bunch of new features, including uh, the ability, hopefully, if it works, thank you, Guido, <laughs> the ability to uh, save it on your SD card, because when you start downloading lots of images, it can take up a bit of space. Um, you can, I think there's also a new capability that allows you, there's a new capability that allows you to play the game without signing in using your Cosmo Quiz lo login. But if you have a Cosmo Quiz login, and you sign in with that, you can save your high scores between devices and share them, you know, share them with your friends on Facebook and brag about it and all that fun stuff. Basically, this is a game. It's a game and an educational app. Uh, it's based on the um, surf planetary surface vocabulary cards that Irene Antonenko made up for us a while back. They're these really gorgeous. Let me see if I can bring one up. They're these really gorgeous um, pictures of. Let's go to Rocky Worlds. Uh, different planetary surface features. Um, most of them, and I think where we got a lot of these images is from the plan the NASA Planetary Photo Journal, I think, which is just mm. this huge repository of images from all the landers and rovers and orbiters and stuff. Um, so these 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 uh, planetary surface cards has got some planetary image. I can hide the description so you can see the whole thing. So there's Olympus Mons, Mars. Um, and it's got a description written by a planetary scientist uh, about the thing that you're looking at. Um, so it started with this idea, but it became a game called Earth or Not Earth, which is also part of the Terra Luna uh, unit, right. our Moon Mappers educational unit. Right. Which um, So that's the easy version of the game. It's you get a picture, and we've made it <laughs> black and white just to make it a little bit harder. And you have to tell us, is this Earth or is it not Earth? Is okay. it Earth? Is it not think? Earth? I'm going to say... Not. Not Earth. This is Mars. Correct. Mm. So you can go to the vocabulary card to learn more about it, or you can click Next and get to the next picture, and you do it again. You do it until I think you get 10 wrong. You do it until you get a bunch wrong, and then it gives you a high score based on how many you got right at that point. Um, we've got a few hundred images in there and are looking to expand that, uh, assuming I'm doing that when I get a chance. There's a couple harder games, too, uh, matching uh, makes you gives you the image and and asks you either what what um what body in the solar system is it or what geological feature is it and then the last one pick two is really hard it shows you a bunch of tiles and you have to match the two that are from the same planetary body and yeah. that one uh, that one's still a challenge for me even though I help dig up most of the because <laughs> when you help dig up most of the pictures it's kind of easy to do. Um, yeah, but it's funny, as many times as I've seen a lot of those pictures, it's still, yeah. they're amazingly, in a sense, they're similar because mm -hmm. I mean, they're, it's just a certain kind of feature, and you're like, well, that could be on this 
planet or that planet or the yep. moon because they all share these features. So it really, it's not as easy as you might think, even if you've seen the pictures a few times. And uh, actually, I liked that last version. It's timed. So yes. it's like that added sense and of... And you get negative you know, points if you do it at edge to it. I have to, you know. So I really, I actually like that last one. That's, yeah, that's pretty fun. I spent a little time with it last, I think a week ago or so, when he was, yeah, tweaking Testing. it. So mm -hmm. to, to show you that an iOS version does exist, here's my iPad. Here's Earth or Not Earth, the test version. So you guys can't have that. That's the one Joe put on. Um, but <laughs> they are applying to put it in the, in the App Store, so we'll be ready to announce that once it goes through. All of, I, don't, I don't develop apps. I don't know what all the steps are, but I'm sure there were things happening. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so this app and this app, the proceeds from this app, uh, bleh, uh, the proceeds from this app, once Google takes its Play Store cut, and I guess the Apple Store takes its iOS Store cut, um, go all goes towards developing future, present and future educational and science projects on CosmoQuest. So it helps us out. Uh, it it pays our fabulous programmer Joe uh, <laughs> for all the hard work he's done, uh, and and it keeps us making more good stuff. So that's Earth or Not Earth. It's on the Android Store now, the Play Store now, and it's coming to the iOS Store soon. Yeah, so it also um, yeah. showcases Irene's fabulous cards. Right. Those are just so nice. Lots of good information and beautiful pictures. Right. So even if you just, gosh, if you just look through the cards and you and those just are in color. look those at some, are in color. yeah, look at some great pictures of of the solar system and and read and learn about it. Um, those are fantastic. Yep. I I I especially like the part where you can post your scores on Facebook and challenge your friends to do better. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. That's what I did. <laughs> All right, so that is that's my first one. Do you want to do another one? Um, uh, let's see. I got. I don't know how much I've used this one, but I do think it's really cool. It's just called. Yes, what is it called? <laughs> Moon Globe. Thank you. I thought it had a fancier name than that. Was it called Moon Globe? Moon Globe. Okay. Yeah. Um, one of the. People in our local astronomy club kind of told me about this one, and it's exactly you know what it says. It's the moon globe, Woo. and the neat thing is um, it has all the craters, all the features labeled. Uh, you can the more you zoom in, uh, the more millions of craters you see, and they're all labeled. So one thing I, w I love to go out and look at the moon, and I always wonder, you know, what's that crater? I really, t you know, there's tons of craters up there, and I just thought, you know, it'd be nice if I knew which one that was and who was that named after, because they have some amazing names. So this one, this app will show you the moon, um, all the crater names. You can, um, of course, you know, see all the aspects. You can see the other side of the moon that you don't usually get to see. Um, it will show you the phase of the moon. Um, given your um, the date, your location, what you're going to actually see in the sky, or you can just use it um, almost like an encyclopedia. You can just look at the whole moon, all the just like a big map, big 3D map. So it's a lot of fun. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think of. Now these don't get quite as high resolution as the lunar reconnaissance orbiter images because I don't think any of those craters are big enough to be named. Right. <laughs> Um, like what you see over on Moon Mappers. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. You've, you've but it's still, it theme. looks really, it's, you know, and it's some of the stuff you just, you know, you see when you look up at the sky, you look through your telescope, and you're just wondering, you know, what in the world <laughs> you're actually looking at. And so you can, you know, spin it around, you can see um, the very heavily cratered, you know, other side of the moon that we don't. Oh, yeah, that's cool. To see, so it's um, it's just it's a lot of fun, and it's again, you know, kind of a it's a good beginner's app, kind of like the Apod because you know it's simple, it's easy. Mm -hmm. So I tend to like those. I'm going to if it's an Android <laughs> version, I'm going to find that and because uh, and use that when I do star parties because I'll put you know the moon with the Terminator and people are like wow craters yeah. what's that one and I'm like I don't <laughs> I don't know sadly. So well, in, in addition, so in addition to um, 
the crater naming, it will show you, and again, I don't know how well you can see this, but you, it'll show you where all the spacecraft are that have landed. Aye. So Does it have Chengi? Does it have Not Chengi? that you can see the spacecraft, of course, but you can look and say, yeah, that's where it is. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> again, you need the lunar reconnaissance orbiter to see the spacecraft. <laughs> so. Very true. Very true. So you have to use your imagination a little bit, but still, yeah. you know, that... People ask that. People, you know, they want to know what they're looking at and mm -hmm. then, you know, is there anything else there? Is that where, you know, where's Apollo 16? Where's, you know, Luna, whatever? And you can tell them, well, you know, there's a few right there. You can't really see them, but, but they are there. Well, that's cool because I, I think in Moon I think in Moon Mappers, we're still using the image. I may be wrong. I apologize, Stuart, if I'm wrong. Um, we, for a while, we were using images all centered around the Apollo 15 landing site uh, for the crater mapping for the first work that went down in uh, Moon Mappers. So right. And yeah. so you could look at still, the moon yeah, and, and be like, that's where Apollo 15 is. That's the little patch that we've been studying, for, you know, had people, uh, citizens counting craters on. Yeah. Yep. So, there you go. Helping to map that part right there. Cool. <laughs> All right. I'm going to open up. We also have another. We have a Moon Mappers app. Uh, here you go. So back to the science folder. Um, this was an earlier app that Joe did. This one's free on the Android store again. Um, <laughs> I don't think I, I, I don't know if there's an iOS version in the works. I know it was planned. But if you have Android, this one is free. And it's Moon Mappers Crater Decay. So if you are doing citizen science with Moon Mappers on CosmoQuest, there is a second level that you can do um, that you can do on your mobile device uh, that picks the craters that have been identified and asks you for how eroded they look. And so it gives you a crater here in the crosshairs, and you have to pick, uh, is it like really sharp, is it kind of eroded, is it not even there at all, blah, blah, blah. So you go ahead and pick those and submit those, and you get cute little badges, which are, I, I think a lot of them are rockets. I was very excited when I got the Saturn V badge. So you get <laughs> badges as you go along. This does require a CosmoQuest login, um, since it ties into, or at least right now, because it ties into the uh, into the citizen science projects that we do on the website. So Moon Mapper's Crater Decay, also on the Android store, this one's free. And you can actually be doing the citizen science while you're standing in line at the grocery store or at the bank <laughs> or wherever people stand in no, line. You truly really can, yeah. You can be doing science on the go. Yeah. I, I, we've we run around at Dragon Con with this and, and uh, talk to people who are waiting in autograph lines. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, so while you're waiting to meet Richard Dean Anderson or whoever whoever <laughs> is in line right in front of us, why don't you help us do some science? Yeah. So uh, that's our our Moon Mappers app. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what else Joe comes up with because that was kind of his thing was to take on the mobile app development for CosmoQuest. So I'm pretty excited because uh, it can be yeah. in my pocket. Do you know who thought of the idea of looking at crater degradation? Do you have any? Was that I'm I want to say it came from the 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 principal investigators Stuart okay. and Irene but I'm not entirely sure I, I yeah. think that decision was made before my time so <laughs> I'm not sure but it's they definitely an interesting um, yeah. it's definitely an interesting question that the scientists are looking at is not only where the craters are how big they are but also how eroded they are yeah or something. yeah okay. so, so that's that one do you have another one oh yeah. uh, let's see so I got a bunch so there's a bunch that I've kind of looked at but not really used a lot, and they're all, you know, there's many star maps, ways to find your way around the sky that are available, and this one I've got is Star Map Light. Ooh. And, of course, it's light because it's free. <laughs> there is a um, one that you, and I don't even know what the, it's, oh, I can't remember now if it was two ninety nine or four ninety nine. It wasn't horrible or anything. Um, to, oh, here we go. It's telling me, hello, would you like to unlock all the features for only $4.99? Yeah. So if you would like to unlock all the features for $4.99, you could do that. But I'm going to be cheap and not do that right now. I might do that later. And okay. so then, yes, if you don't unlock all the features, you also get a few ads. So, but that's okay. Otherwise, what this does is, of course, uses your location, um, gives you a nice star map, to let you see the constellations that are visible um, right now in the sky. Um, it will show you planets. It, uh, you can toggle on and off um, constellation 
uh, diagrams, very simple like stick figure sort of diagrams, or you can put the very beautiful Greek um, figure, you know, traditional pictures up there if you like to look at that too. Um, shows you the planets that are currently visible as star names. Um, just your basic nice map of the sky. Um, you can just sort of swirl it all around and see anything that you need to see. So it's kind of, it's really handy. And I don't know what I, I don't think this one will do is turn everything red mm. so that you don't sort of blast your night vision <laughs> as can so often happen during a star party. Um, that's either not this app or it's the one of the features that I have not unlocked yet. So um, it's important. Actually feature. I looked at about I know I really I would want that feature. Um, so, so I may have to pay for that. Uh, but um, when you come to my star party, yes, supernova apps like this, <laughs> and um, yeah, that is a good feature if yeah. you can get an app with that because it it really does help. Um, so this is just, um, and this will tell you like what's available, what's available, what's available for viewing tonight. So it has a nice little screen. Ooh, Kind of like oh, this. Look at that. These are all the different objects and so on the left and right you see of course the lighter blue is the daylight time and then um, the dark blue in the center is the dark time, night time and so it will kind of tell you from what hour to what hour something is visible. So we've got Jupiter, lots of lovely winter stars, Sirius, Capella, Rigel, Betelgeuse, all that good stuff um, and approximately when they're going to be um, at zenith in the sky, so very helpful too if you just want to get your observing list going. Um, it's got deep sky objects on it, which is very nice too if you're in a dark site. And I think that's about it. So that is, and that's of course I think one of the simpler ones. Again, one of the simpler apps mm -hmm. for this. Cool. <coughs> I like that star map light. Star map light and yeah. the entire star map family. Right, yeah. <laughs> star <laughs> map, star map features, pro yes. and star map media. Yes, I'll, I'll, I mean, there's a website. I'll include that again in our blog post. Uh, okay. Nice. And yeah. All the star map family. Uh, we have a comment from Guido. One day the whole moon mapper's website will run on tablets. I can dream, can't I? I think it does now, right? It's not as easy. So the, the Cosmo Quest Citizen Science pages should run on tablets. Um, I've done it. If you have a stylus, it's, it, it works a little better, but it's just it's, it's not as precise as if you have a mouse. Hmm. You can do CosmoQuest crater mapping on a, on a tablet. Um, it's, it's just, I have not it's, tried that. Fidgety. No. I've done it. It's just fidgety. I, I prefer my mouse and my I computer see, screen. Right. I could see that being a little... You need some fidgety. patience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. So you can do it on a tablet. It's just, it's just, you know, eh, maybe not as precise. Okay. So, but you can do, can do the crater decay, and that's simple. You know, pick one of four. Yeah. Um, so speaking, of, we had lots of commenters on the what group did I post on? The giant space group on Google Plus. Um, and people sent in their suggestions. A lot of them are similar to Star Map in that they get you around the night sky, and that's one of the ways in which these are super, super useful because you have your phone with you. Not everybody has a planisphere or a Star Map with them. I don't know why not. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I and I, I shamelessly open Google Sky Map when I'm out there doing public observing. I just have no shame. It's like, what's that? I'm gonna check. Um, Mobile yeah. devices know where you're located. Know where you're located. They know what time you're in. They're pretty good about figuring out what direction they're pointing at. Uh, I can't actually. So you can't actually see the screen because Google Sky Map I do have set to dim and redden so okay. dark that you can't see anything in here. Yeah. Um, but because I, I do use it a lot when I'm outside. So Google Sky Map is one. Star Map is one. Let me see if I can go through um, Mars Rover Celebration on Twitter. Uh, pointed out that uh, Sky Safari. Sky Safari is a very popular one. Uh, I think I grabbed, every once in a while they do a sale, because uh, Sky Safari has a free version and it has, you know, or maybe a cheaper version and more expensive versions. 
I managed to pick up one of them when it was on sale before the holidays. I think Guido pointed that one out as well. Um, so Sky Safari is, is a popular one. Um, okay. I've got another one, Distant Suns, of course, oh. Light. Distant Suns. <laughs> this is also uh, a, a viewing app, like a viewing the yep. sky? Sky Map um, has, seems to have a few more features to it. It has um, ooh, what they're calling a SETI um, sort of toggle switch where it will show you the parts of the sky where gosh if you can find it um, where Kepler was looking for oh okay um, so it, it has a few extra has a few extra features it will also pull in more um, current events okay and it will load so it spends a few minutes telling you when you first started up that it's loading cool stuff so it tries to pull in any um, current events in the astronomy world that are going on, but I don't see anything about the supernova. Okay, so it has just a scrolling to... scroll. It has a scroll across the top that looks like sort of astronomy news. Hmm. Okay, so distant so sun is another one. And again, that's it's light. So I'm sure if you didn't, if you wanted to pay a few mm -hmm. bucks, you know, it'd be good. Yes, the astronomy popularizer John Dobson dies January 16th. The uh, Mars Rover Celebration also included Sky View. There's like sky mm -hmm. every word possible. So Sky View is another one. This one is billed as an augmented reality space exploration app that lets you use your iDevice. Uh, you can hold it up in the air and discover stars, constellations, planets, and satellites. So there's uh, oh. various different iOS versions of Sky View. Um, there's also Redshift. This one has lots of funky planet pictures. Uh, let me open this up. So Redshift is also on the iOS store. Oh, man. What else did you guys nice. recommend? Um, okay. mm -hmm. chart one. Let's see. Man, I, have, I seriously have 18 different tabs open. So Skyview, Sky Safari, Redshift, Distant Suns. Oh, here's the... <laughs> Uh, if you're on a computer, I mean, we were talking about mostly about mobile apps, but when you're on the computer, Stellarium is still a favorite for free planetarium software. And Star Chart is one. It's um, free, similar to uh, yeah, similar to Starwalk, just another night sky, find your way around kind of thing. Um, displays things in real time, but also includes a time shift feature that lets you see what the sky will look like. 10,000 years into the past or future, which would be really cool. Oh my gosh. Let's see. That's, yeah, iOS or Android for that one. There's Sky, where Sky is pronounced S K E Y E, as in S K I. Uh, this is an Android app that uh, aims to be an advanced planetarium that utilizes the powerful mobile platforms. So that's another, that one was recommended by Russell Bateman. Uh, over on the space group, so that's another one. Lots and lots of lunar, there's another lunar map HD. Uh, Solar System 3D is uh, another one that was recommended. This isn't quite, now we're moving away from the, here's what's up in the sky right now, but exploring the solar system. So the Solar System 3D uh, kind of lets you zoom around in the solar system and see the planets and the moons and uh, fun things like that. So there's uh, more on the educational side as well. Yeah. Yep, well, and there's just a good old NASA app which pulls in all kinds of stuff on their missions, different images, videos. Um, you can follow their tweets. <laughs> you can um, learn about all their centers, um, look at their programs. They have news. So it's, um, it's, just, it's just NASA, and it's got like nine different things. You can just pull in whatever you want to keep up with all the things that are going on with NASA. So that's cool. Kind of cool. A little bit of everything. A little bit of all the things. Um, oh, here's a, a different side of observing. Um, there's an app I use called Jove Moons on Android, and I think this has an iOS as well. There's also one I just found while getting ready for the show called Jupiter's Moons. Um, oh. Basically, these apps give you tell you, so here's my little Jove Moons app. Um, if you're looking at Jupiter right now, all those other little dots are the Galilean moons, and you can click on them to see which moon is which. And this is really useful if you're looking through a small telescope and you see Jupiter and its moons. 
uh, or if you're showing that to people and they say, hey, what are those little things lined up around yeah. it? Those are the moons that Galileo discovered 403. And it'll tell you which five years ago. Which, right? Uh, this yeah. one does, but not terribly easily. I think you have to kind of click on it and zoom around to get it to show you. You can probably figure it out from the color, but I'm usually cold <laughs> and don't care. Uh, the, the other one called Jupiter's Moons, I don't know where that one went, um, kind of gives you the, the, the curves. So it uh, it's uh, if you're used to looking at those sky maps, like in Sky and Telescope, where yeah, yeah, they yeah. plot out uh, where you know the moon curves, and you can see that. So that's really ha handy to have some kind of app like that for when you're showing Jupiter. And as you saw, may have seen on George's screen, Jupiter's up all night long right now. Uh, it's a great, it's a great target. It's a great thing to show people because yeah. it's wow, that's a planet, and I can see its clouds, and I can see its moons. I can see uh, the moons, and then they want it. They they always ask, you know, well, which ones which are, yeah. and it's just like it's like the craters. Well, which you know, what's that big crater there? They want to know the names, right. and that always gets me every time because I've always been terrible at trying to memorize. Like, there's only four. Like, oh, I don't there's know. Only four. It's a lot easier than craters. <laughs> <laughs> it's only four. <laughs> But it's it's a little bright dot, so it's like okay, is that can that's, that's why these ad, that's why I have no <laughs> moons of Jupiter. That's why I have no qualms about pulling out my phone. Oh, right. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I'm gonna tell people where I get my information. I don't have this memorized. <laughs> that's silly. Um, Sources. That's yes. all right. At least people are outside. Outside. My, Michael Jobin says my phone folds in half. So. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> These are smartphone apps. Whoops. Oh. Not full phone apps. <laughs> oh, um, well, that's okay. Let's see. I what know, else? I, I don't know. Did you talk about the one? I've seen people bring, like, the iPad out to, like, a sky, um, sky event, a star party, and they just hold it up to the sky, and it, you know, it, so it shows you right there right. what's what you're looking at just right above you and gives you all the names and, and all that. Yep, so, as long as the screen's not too bright. I mean, yeah. okay. A few of them do that, and I wish I knew the name of that one. It, it, it might it be so sorry. Yeah, it's not one that I have, but that would be very cool. All right, so um, i trying to think. Um, oh, okay, another tangent off the observing apps. Uh, I love being able to point out when the International Space Station is going to go overhead. Uh, and there's a couple of apps for that. Um, iOS has ISS Spotter mm. by Media Pilot. And the one I use on Android is ISS Detector Satellite Tracker. All <laughs> words. Um, I think it, this, this is the one that even, and it even has a widget on one of my home screens and tells me when the next. Um, and it tells me when the next ISS or major iridium flare is going to go overhead. And so uh, it's right there. Um, of course, it doesn't help me when it tells me when things happen at 5 a.m. because I'm usually not observing with people at 5 a.m., but that's fine. <laughs> but uh, that's really cool to be able to point up and be like, hey, guys, there's going to be a satellite pass that's going to be really bright, or hey, the International Space Station is going to pass over. We're going to be able to see it. Um, you know, I, it's just a good idea to check that. Uh, Heavens Above is is the default resource, web resource for lots of yeah. people. Uh, but for for mobile app, uh, you can also do that quickly on one of these ISS detector, ISS spotter apps, because that gives you, like I said, that makes you look really cool, because you're like, I know when the International Space Station is going to go overhead. Hey! Again, you just show them the app, and they can do it too. So that's pretty fun. Yeah. So that's uh, those are my my favorite space apps. Oh, we did not, and th we would be remiss if we did not, since you may have seen it on the screen. This little moon here is the actual moon phase. Many many people yes, brought up phases of the moon. Yeah. yeah so Universe Today also okay. is an app. Phases of the moon available in both stores. There's a free and a pro version. Free has ads. Pro is you pay for and get no ads. Um, and it's cool because it shows you the moon phase as it is right now, but you can also scroll backwards mm -hmm. and forwards in time and do cool stuff. And if you keep going, you actually see the moon's libation. You can see it rocking around in the sky, which is kind of fun. Um, but I, I, that's another one that's just yeah. ooh, always on one of my home screens. So little moon phase right there. Uh, so phases of the moon app, universe today, 
I mean, but most of you guys have probably heard of that app, but you should check it out if you haven't. Yeah. It's, it's another uh, really useful observing app. <sighs> Anything else before I continue to ramble? <laughs> <laughs> I got more, but I just... <laughs> uh, you know, that's those are the ones that I usually use. Okay. Yeah, because I'm usually just, you know, kind of preparing for what I'm going to go observe when I go out and right. see what's available, kind of orienting myself to the sky and the constellations, moon phase, all that. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, did you, um, we're, I think we're going to talk about a dark sky. Yes. Yeah. Did you? I have. Um, so I just That was one I was looking at, but I didn't have the right phone. Oh, that's I bad. have my phone's too old for that one. I'm okay. Sure. So Globe at Night does a program every year to um, engage citizen scientists in looking at the night sky and and measuring how dark the night sky is near you. So light pollution is obviously a problem for astronomers, but it also can be a safety issue, an economic concern, an issue for uh, local wildlife. Lots mm -hmm. of reasons why having too much light pointing in the wrong direction is a bad thing. And so Globe at Night has been, for, for the past several years now, uh, engaging people in doing that. So Globe at Night has a web app, which is a web page that works well on your mobile phones. If you go to the Globe at Night website and go to their web app, that lets you uh, take your observations. It's as simple as locating a bright constellation in the sky and mm. picking out you know, uh, what it looks like and, and which stars you can see uh, and submitting your observations that way. Uh, so that's, there's Globe at Night's official web app. And then there are two mobile apps, one for Android and one for iOS that they've officially partnered with. Uh, Loss of the Night, which you won't be able to see on my screen because it also has an auto dim and bed feature. Thank you, guys. Uh, Loss of the Night. But I can show you the icon. Because, yeah, I, I can't even see it in here. It's too bright. <laughs> but it's a little owl. <laughs> Loss of the Night. Oh. Um, it's available in something like 11 languages now. They just updated that. Um, and it uh, it takes you through the sky and says, can you see this star? Can you see this star? Can you see this star? And you tell it, yes, no, I'm not sure for all these different stars, and it figures out your sky brightness based on that. So that's Loss of the Night on Android. That pairs with, uh, they're, they're, pairing, they're pairing with Globe at Night to share data, mm -hmm. so that this is part of the Citizen Science Project. And the iOS one is uh, Dark Sky Meter, and I think that's the one you looked at because I don't have yeah. an iPhone. Yeah. I'm not cool. <laughs> no, I like my Android device. I love my Android devices. Um, dark sky meter, uh, a dark sky meter in general is, is, is a tool that you can use to measure the background brightness of the night sky. And the dark sky meter app, as I understand it, which I haven't actually played with, um, does that, turns your iPhone into a dark sky meter. So you it uses the camera and it calibrates it and it does all the things so that you can take those dark sky measurements and have that be included in the Globe at Night program as well. So that's uh, three different ways that you can, um, that you can, um, bleh, my brain just broke. <laughs> three different ways that you can take part in this, in this light pollution citizen science. Yes, with a mobile device. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Tom Nath mm. Nathy has a good question. Uh, clear sky or weather apps? I, do you have a favorite? I mean, I got to be honest, I don't use anything specific to astronomy for weather or clear sky. Do you, Georgia? I don't. Um, okay. I, I use IntelliCast. That's a really, yeah, that's a good. Uh, weather Underground and really the... Um, Okay, I'll, there's a website for their, uh, what's it called? There's a clear sky clock. Cleardarksky.com. No, I don't know if they yes. have an app for that. You think probably they do, no. but that I use, I just don't use it as an app. They don't have an app for that. <laughs> Cleardarksky.com <laughs> is, is, is another one of those things that's been around for, for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. And it is, let me just screen share the page. Uh, I have the Edwardsville Observatory up. That's uh, one of our locations on campus, but it pretty much works for all of campus, including my observing site. Can you see that, Georgia? Is it showing on the screen? Okay, yeah. So uh, this little jammy, this you can do in a web browser. You can pull it up in a web browser on your mobile phone. It looks fine. I, I could, you, you could do, you could totally do that. It's not an app <laughs> that I know of. If if you guys know of, if they've made an app, tell me. Um, but this is in Edwardsville, and this 
all these colored bars look a little intimidating at first, but once you get used to it, you see that the, the top one is your cloud cover. And if it's light blue or white, you don't bother looking at the sky because it's cloudy. Uh, and then it gets to darker blue as it clears up, and it shows you time of day. Uh, it's go it gives you usually like a day and a half, two and a half days of, of predictions. It gives you the transparency. And um, which is, you know, if, if there's light cloud cover, if that's going to cause any problems, depending on how you're observing. If you're doing photometry, if you're trying to get accurate brightnesses, you don't want to be out when the transparency stinks. Uh, and the scene, which tells you um, how, f if you're imaging, how you know, fine of a resolution of an imaging can you do because the atmosphere is doing weird things. Um, so this is really, really interesting for uh, astronomers who are going to be using equipment or if you are running a Skylab, uh, <laughs> running a, a star, um, some kind of astronomy lab for a campus and whatnot, uh, that's really useful. Not yeah, or necessarily you're, you're planning an event or you're yeah. getting ready to tell people, <laughs> are we right. going or are we canceling? Can we go? Can we not? Can we go? Oh, not perfect, but... And they, they make it so that you can embed that little image and it'll auto-update on your website. So I have that, I have that auto-updating on our uh, Star Party website for the university which is pretty cool. So that is, uh, again, not necessarily a mobile app, but I pull it up on my mobile phone all the time on, on the browser, and it works just fine. That's so yeah. clear dark sky, if you could find a location near you that has one of these. Um, and, yeah, that's good. And then, you know, I, I depending on how many people I think are going to show up, how iffy the weather is, <laughs> I will use Intellicast, uh, Weather Underground, Weather.com. I, I will use all the things. <laughs> for determining uh, whether or not I'm going out and, yeah. and dragging the dragging the telescopes out, yeah. uh, and also this and this practice too. It, it really comes with practice. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any favorite mm -hmm. spacey games? Because we've got a couple people mentioning the Kerbal Space Program, which I've not ever opened because I've heard how addictive it is, and I don't. I've not heard <laughs> say that again. What is Kerbal that? Space oh. Program? <laughs> You yeah. launch these little things called Kerbals. You build a sp I don't, Fraser needs to talk about this because I don't know much about it. And then because he talks about how addictive it is, I, I've been purposefully avoiding it. And staying away. Um, there does not seem to be an Android equivalent of it. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is Guido Bibra and Eric Biggs talking about this in the Q&A app. Um, there's probably none, but there are some simple games called Space Agency and simple right. rockets, which deal with rocket building. So those are games where you, again, that uh, learning through games technique, um, I guess you can kind of learn physics from Angry Birds if, if you tried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's a, a way, uh, these, uh, Space Agency, Simple Rockets, Kerbal Space Program. You're playing with rocketry, you're, doing a, you're learning a little bit of intuitive physics somewhere along the way, I'm sure, uh, and having a good time playing a game and trying to launch your Kerbals into space. But yeah, totally not going to open that because... <laughs> I oh, need to sure. be addicted to a game. Gosh, what did I forget? Oh, I've got two more on here I want to show. Do you mind? Okay. I'm just going to keep rambling. No, that's fine. I was going to say, I'm just looking at one. So there's all kinds of yeah. blogs and people that, you know, tell you the 10, you know, best astro apps and the top yeah. 15 astronomy apps. And I'm just saying there's one here from the UK that says there's an app called UFO World Sightings. So, you know, if you want to know where the aliens are landing, where the UFOs are being sighted around the world. Um, audio audio listeners, you're not right hearing now. me facepalm. I'm facepalming <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It's fine. I love that stuff. It, it's, it's fine. But uh, that's interesting because I wonder, you know. Oh, what oh. would be interesting to me is, you know, yeah, where are people seeing the most where are the most sightings happening? And that could tell you maybe a couple of different things. Not just where, <laughs> but what something time. About, something about the people and the places there, or, you know, maybe there's something maybe there's something going on. Or, but, you know, with a Venus... That could be an amusing app. With for, Venus coming up in the morning sky, I mean, that's oh, going to yeah. cause some UFO reports, too. So, there mm -hmm. you go. So there's uh, something a little different, yeah. <laughs> a little something <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> yes, weather, weather Underground does sound funny. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. Um, That's been around forever, too. Yeah. Uh, Meteor Counter is another app. Um, <clears throat> on their website, they have all the links to the iOS store. They also have one 
on the Android store. Uh, Meteor Counter is another citizen science. I love the citizen science. The citizen science project, which lets you, um, if you're outside and you see a meteor, you click the thing and it counts a meteor. You, you, you click uh, its, its brightness. Okay. Um, so again, it knows where you are, and it knows what time it is, and you're marking these meteors as they happen. And this is um, something that the Lottie team is interested in. Lottie is the Lunar Atmospheric Dust and Exosphere Explorer. Ha! Um, <laughs> that is a spacecraft that's currently orbiting the moon and exploring its exosphere. So that's the tenuous not atmosphere that it has. Um, and since it's they're interested in what's hitting the moon, uh, things might be hitting the moon at a greater rate if we're seeing more meteors, because you know we're close to the moon. Uh, and so that is actually a citizen science project that's helping out that space program. So Meteor Counter is another observational type app you want to have. So yeah, like I said, we're talking about all these apps. I really only have like eight on my phone, and one of them is the Next Gen Science Standards, which. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I keep on me all the time, I guess, plus the ISS app and the moon app. You never know when you're going to need it. You never know when you're going to need the next generation science standards in your pocket. I mean, come <laughs> on, there's that for everything. Um, I drew. Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. One more on my phone. Okay, this is totally cheating. This one's called Model Solar System, and I, whoever did this app, I love you. Uh, because you enter, if you want to make a scale model solar system, like for a school group or outreach, you enter either the diameter of the sun in inches or the total length in feet. Sorry, rest of the world, it's in feet. feet. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, no, that's not true. Wait, no, you, you can toggle. You can toggle. You can toggle. No to, metric. To, to metric. No metric. Um, or the total length of your model in meters or feet. Uh, so if I have... If I have a thing that I want to be the sun, I don't know. Say the squirrel is the sun. <laughs> hey, <fuzzy laughs> it's the squirrel. Okay. How many meters in diameter is the squirrel? It's about five inches across. I'm gonna go with inches. Sorry. I just I was born here. I can't oh. help it. And then you hit calculate, and he <laughs> kiss you. So you can sit there and find objects of the right size. So if this was the sun, uh, in my scale model, Mercury would be 17 feet away. 17 feet and 2 inches away. <laughs> wow, alright. Yeah. And what diameter would Mercury be? Uh, point oh one seven four inches. Ooh. So, a hundred, two hundredths <laughs> of an inch. <laughs> oh my goodness, wow. Yeah, well, so, get out of ruler, and start walking. You can make your own model solar system. <laughs> that doesn't seem... That's excellent. That's a great teaching app. That's a great yeah. one for teachers because that we don't just sit there and want to do that and you know you want to use the things that you have around. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, totally cool. I love anyway. So because I do model solar system a lot, uh, I like that app because it lets me do it really quickly. Yeah, I'm happy to do all that. Uh, I want to look at the comments. Um, we talked about Kerbal. Uh, Eric Briggs says there's a. F I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. There's a free Antikythera mechanism app on the Google Store, and it demonstrates the gear meshing. So I, um, it demonstrates the gear meshing, but it doesn't uh, do anything extra or or make predictions or anything like that. Oh. Uh, and assuming I I pronounced that correctly, Antikythera mechanism. It's um, an ancient device that was used to predict astronomical predictions. Um, and it's got gears and stuff. So it looks like somebody recreated that as an app. Wow. That's pretty cool. Now um, there's a Galaxy Collider app, which I'm not sure how great it is. It's called Galaxy Collider. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that one to try it out, but just because we often talk about what happens when galaxies collide. All I can find is Gal Crash. You which ain't is not mobile. Yeah. All right. Let me. Wait, I want to see this. Oh, Galaxy Collider on the app. There we go. Yeah. On the. Ooh. Anyone you uh, Galaxy on the Collider? Or store on the. Yeah. So I don't know. Something to investigate. Okay. So Galaxy Collider on the iTunes Store looks like it's ninety nine cents. I would totally pay that just to check it out. Um, it's a. Oh, so you can. It does a. Um, Says does a simulation that visualizes the colli colliding galaxies. Uh, that's really cool. We'll have to check that out. 
um, because Gal Crash is a Java yes, app, web-based yes. one that we know is very sciencey. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, it's um, sciencey. Uh, it's sciencey. Well, it's more of a simulation. Probably. Yeah, that's right. the one we use for some of our educational yeah. activities. But I'm gonna have to play with that. If anybody uses Galaxy Collider in iOS, comment back and let us know how that works. Although I'll probably play with it at some point. <laughs> Um, Jim Meeker is asking if anyone knows when You're the Cast will go live, and I checked that, and I don't know much about this. I've heard of it before. It's a, it's a launch of um, high-definition cameras to the International Space Station so that you can have near-live, real-time HD video of Earth from the ISS. I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry. sorry I've um, heard about it, but I don't. Yeah. It has been launched to the ISS, but I haven't heard anything since then. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to get back to that. Let's see if there are any other comments. I'm going to try and scroll through. Oh, crikey. Oh, no, that's about the supernova. Um, uh, any other fun apps you can think of? Like I said, we're going to make a list of these. Um, let me see. And I, yeah. Yeah, we're going to make a list, put it on CosmoQuest.org. And spot the station, right, or at least... So, one version like of that, that. Um, telling you when the ISS is visible. So yeah, so at cosmoquest.org slash x slash educators zone, you just go to educate button at the top of CosmoQuest, it'll take you there. We'll put the blog post up there with the list of your recommendations, our recommendations. It's not going to be a top 10, top 15, or anything like that. I'm just going to group them by, I'm going to try and group them by category, like, you know, observing citizen science. Um, stuff like that, and uh, yeah, you can browse through yourself, play with them. We do encourage buying apps. I, it's not, I mean, it's not something I did for early on because I was like, I just spent so much money on this phone. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is nice to uh, either, I mean, if, if you're cool with ads on a lot of free apps, that's fine. Uh, that's one way that developers get paid. We mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, having our developers get paid if you mm -hmm. spend a few bucks on an app that you really, really like. It's mm -hmm. worth it. Um, but it does. That kind of gets old, and I do the same thing. It's like at first I don't want to pay any extra. Like I just, right. you know, I did. I tried a few today, and it's like, oh, I got the free version, and I don't. It's what? It's two ninety nine. It's yeah. it's not like it's much more, but there's just that initial. Oh, I just want the free one, but then yeah, next week I'll be yeah. paying for the the pro version. So. You know, and gift cards. This is why gift cards to app stores are awesome yeah. because you get a gift card, and you're just like, I'm gonna buy all, all the cool the stores, Yes. So that's good for the holidays. Give yeah. your friends a gift card. Suggest some astronomy apps. Get them into astronomy. Uh, that's, that's a good way to share. Take your device it. outside. Take that's your device outside. Our motto. You will never hear this from a radio astronomer. <laughs> Take your device outside. Unless you're at a radio observatory, because then we will yell at you. So, uh, yeah. yeah. If you. That's a whole different thing. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. Um, <laughs> Don't you know? A, a basic common courtesy: if you're if you're observing and bring your phone out, don't keep it super bright. Don't wave it around. Uh, you're gonna ruin other people's night vision. Keep it low. Keep it in front of you. Dim the brightness on your screen. If you can, if you do have an app that'll redden your screen, there are a couple. Um, I don't know if I know. There's a there's a desktop app called Flux, which reddens your screen as it gets darker. Uh, I have one called. Twilight, Twilight mm -hmm. on Android, which reddens your screen as it gets darker. It ties in with the, with the sunset. Um, you can set, or you can just put a red filter on, all kinds of things. So just be courteous um, using yeah, mobile devices outside. Yeah, a very dark that. site with astronomers. They can get a little testy. Of Dude, not even the, the TAs <laughs> at your astronomy lab? Bright white lights around. That can get kind of dangerous. Yeah. Your TAs will, uh, we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten a little shouty. <laughs> but yes, if you're in a radio observatory, just just turn it off. Just do us a favor. There is nothing you can do. Just turn it off. <laughs> if you're at Green Bank, uh, the these things give off lots of uh, radio light, radio radiation, radio waves, and that will mess with uh, radio observers. So yeah, just turn it off. Not much you can do about it. So unless you know it's a sanctioned star party like they do once a year at Green Bank. Um, <laughs> That not many of you will find yourselves in a radio quiet zone, but if you do, just turn yourself on off. Yeah. Um, one more thing, my my plea is for app developers to make a Google Sky version for, for these. 
I really, really want a sky map to pop up in my strategy right now in my Google Glass. The screen has to be dim. It has to be dim. Helps if it's red. But I think I think that would be pretty cool. So if any developers are thinking of uh, doing some astronomy on Google Glass, I will be your first beta tester. Let's let's do that. There you go. <laughs> That's my plea. <laughs> I my programming is terrible. Um, I think that's it. I think we've got, ooh, uh, we've got Tom looking for one more. There's an app that shows the multispectral sky from radio to the gamma ray. That would be cool. I know that um, lots of <coughs> planetarium programs now involve that. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Tom, go ahead and message me that if you don't get it before the show ends, and we'll include that in the list. Uh, I think that's... I think that's it for our show. I think we've okay. identified all the, not all the astronomy ads. I'm sure we mm -hmm. missed your favorite. I'm sorry. <laughs> please, please that's join nice. in in the comments on the blog post and add in your favorites because uh, we've got a good, nice list going here. Good, some good recommendations. Yep. So, sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah, awesome. Our usual schedule for Hangouts is Friday is the Weekly Space Hangout at noon Pacific. Uh, we will undoubtedly be talking about the supernova in M82 and <laughs> other things that happened. <laughs> other mm -hmm. stuff that happened in the universe. Um, there's uh, some nice uh, panoramic images coming from the Changi, I'm pronouncing that wrong, the Changi uh, lunar lander. Um, there's been some discoveries of the gas filaments in the cosmic web, and there will be other stories, so we'll be talking about those stories. Sunday night is the virtual star party, where you can discover a supernova and not even know it, apparently. I know. <laughs> just That's goes to show you, sometimes you just you don't just know everything show. you're looking at. Yeah, so those of you who were watching Sunday night, you all saw the supernova and, and, and didn't notice it but it's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed it either. Um, so yeah, Sunday night's a virtual star party after dark, I think after 6 p.m. Pacific. So um, they'll be looking at it. Oh, um, I'm sure they'll be looking uh, at it again. They don't know yet how long it might hang around, right? Um, or have there been some... The, the estimate I'm seeing is that... Uh, so what I saw from the Astronomer's Telegram where they announced the spectrum of the supernova saying it was a type 1a, it's a white dwarf supernova. Um, it best fit a previous supernova spectrum from 14 days before it, it hit peak brightness. So that means if it's similar to that one, we've still got uh -huh. another 13 to 14 days before it's yes. at its brightest. So it's still going up. Um, uh -huh. We've got a good couple weeks to, to observe this. That doesn't mean, you know, slack off and don't go look. Go look as soon as you have clear skies. Um, and, uh, yeah, so th I'm sure they'll be looking at it with the virtual star party because they, they caught it last week and did, didn't even didn't even know it. <laughs> and it's near the Big Dipper, is that right? It is near I the Big Dipper. Kind of... Universe Today yeah, has, right. uh, on the on their article about it, they have a, a map that will help you find M82. I've I honestly never found it myself because on its I own it's pretty dim. <laughs> I'm usually in light polluted skies, so, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm no Gary Ganella. <laughs> You, you okay, you find the Big Dipper and then go from there. Find the Big Dipper, go from there, yeah. and uh, yeah, we're definitely a telescope target, maybe a binocular target. I, I don't want to get too, you know, too hyper right. hyperbolic. Uh, so that's Sunday night virtual star party. Monday at uh, twelve Pacific is Astronomy Cast. Uh, I know recently they did a couple, they did an episode about Arthur C. Clarke. So I don't know what they're coming up with this week, but uh, Astronomy Cast still going strong on Mondays. Back around to Wednesday, we have Learning Space. We are in the process of booking lots of interesting and fascinating guests for the next few months. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are involved. In, yeah, I know. I've been flooding. I've like been sending out emails at a frightening speed. <laughs> <laughs> so if Every you... Year, lots of good guests coming up. Yeah. If you know somebody yeah. or if you yourself have an astronomy or science education or outreach project or thing to talk about, uh, email us at educate at cosmoquest.org and uh, we'd be happy to talk to you, put you in the schedule if you want to come chat. You're developing any apps, you know, let us You're know. You're developing an app, there talk you go. Talk about them with us. <laughs> I've developed an app. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's, uh, that yep. is it. I think that's our show for today. Okay. Very fun. Thanks. All the apps. I'm going to go download like five more apps. Oh, oh, Tom just came in at the Invisible Universe on the Play Store. 
Um, there you go. There's the multi-spectral app. We're going to add that to the list. Awesome. All right. Okay. <laughs> Have fun with apps. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right. See you next week. Bye.